I'd like to thank all the members who have uh, given me this opportunity to share my thoughts. And uh, thank you, Namita, again. And uh, thank you, Dr. Arvinder, for laying the ground so solid uh, for the importance of uh, mental health. So we've all heard of a phrase that, you know, has this person got out of the wrong side of the bed today? And that, what does that mean if you think deeper? Why do we say that? And it's a very, very old phrase that something went wrong in the sleep and that's why the person is irritable, angry, restless, um, very emotionally labile. So that's where the role of sleep comes in. And uh, I'm going to touch upon a few things which were mentioned uh, by the, in the inauguration speech and by Dr. Arvinder. So some things we all, I think, are all together on this one cohesive force that wellness is the concept uh, which is of the greatest importance today. And prevention is better than treating a medical illness. So we should all focus uh, on prevention and wellness. So where does this, so I'm then going to come out of that whole big capsule and come into the small thing, which is sleep. But hopefully by the end of this 15, 20 minutes, um, I would have convinced you that sleep is the small thing, but it encompasses the whole thing. So we talked about a few words. Dr. Arvinda mentioned things like hopelessness, fear, anxiety, uncertainty, and what the pandemic has especially created this change in our thinking and the role of emotional health or mental health. So where is the center for all this? What is the leader of the orchestra as well to say? And that's the brain. And how is it all done? It's all done in very simple terms by the chemicals which are released. So when we feel happy, there's a burst of certain groups of chemicals. When we feel sad, there are some chemicals. When we feel anger, there are some chemicals. When we are very hopeful and joyous, there are chemicals. When we get some praise, like she said, you check in with your employees, make sure that they are okay. Uh, encourage them on small, small victories. There are some chemicals. So there are these chemicals which are continuously being released day and night, which make us the individual that we are. So are we that overexcited, stimulated person or are we a calm person? And that's how um, lots of the Ayurvedic philosophies or the yoga in our uh, for centuries has done that it has provided a balance uh, between these two systems. So where does uh, sleep kind of fit into all this? So there have been very interesting uh, researches conducted over the last few decades, actually, because still the time that we have been able to understand what happens in the brain while we are sleeping. So just to say that sleep is not one uniform kind of a situation, but we go through different stages. And with this help of trackers and sleep uh, measures, a lot of people know about deep sleep, light sleep, dream sleep, etc. But just to say that in certain stages of sleep, there is a feeling of calmness, which is much more ensured. We have a small center in the brain, right deep in the brain, which is the, let's say, the anger center or the emotion center. So what was found in a very simple research that they took youngsters who were not given adequate sleep and then there were some who were given good sleep. When you do not get the adequate amount of sleep, that center, the firing center, fires almost 60% more. So just in simple words, there is a short fuse and it is biologically that short fuse is happening. It's not that people are putting on an act. Uh, so one of the inaugural person said that, you know, when the car has a bang, why are we so angry? So maybe we are just not able to control the emotion. So is that anger center, was it the night before was very bad and that, that has fired so much? So that's one part of the story. The second part is that there is a, 
the front part of the brain right behind the forehead has like a controlling effect on that anger center. So that, what does that mean? That means we all can get angry. We can all get upset. As she said, uh, we should acknowledge that when we are upset, that's true. Uh, but we have a certain control, which doesn't allow us to keep flying off the handle. And some authors in the sleep have nicely called this a brake. So this is an accelerator pedal and this is the brake. So this brake uh, does not function well when there is poor sleep. So two things happen. The anger center is firing a lot more and the brake effect is gone. And that's what's made us get very angry. Um, and we also have another word which is called as emotional handling. So you may get angry, but are you able to adjust to your emotions? And if you can't, that's again shows that there is something going wrong. So there are numerous studies which have been done like this, that there are different areas of the brain where if sleep is not adequate, they do not function well. And then we come to this uh, words that, you know, we are very familiar with this, in this, especially the pandemic that adapt, evolve, and resilience. So how do we harness these um, properties within ourselves that we go through this or that the ones, let's say, who we have gone through this somehow to be creative, to be productive. So these are also, in a way, all controlled, uh, of course, by the brain. So what does sleep have to do with all this? So one part I've talked about. Second is that during the day, we process a lot of information. So that information is kind of going into the brain. It gets collected there and processed and stored. And the next day or the few days later, there is an output or a recall. If the sleep is not adequate, in just simple words, there is the proper storage doesn't happen. So what is happening to the brain at night? There is like a cleaning process going on. Another interesting word somebody used was like a spa for the brain is going on. So if you deprive yourself of sleep, you will not get that good cleaning process or like a vacuum cleaning at night does not happen. So what is the result? That you will be tired, lethargic, not that spark is not there when you wake up in the morning. So these are the kind of situations or things that one can feel. Uh, so where what has the pandemic done uh, to disrupt this in a bigger manner? Or what has the research shown us? Uh, because of this availability of these tracker system and the questionnaire system, and like we said, now we have the internet, etc. There have been large studies published, up to 3 lakh individuals, 54,000, 13 countries, 40 countries. And what has the result shown? That the people who had COVID, somewhere between 60 to 70% have complained about a sleep issue. Health professionals, about 35 to 40%, and general public, about 30 to 40%. So the sleep issues have really uh, accelerated. And that's it's, it's been a very tremendous hike in the sleep problems. Why? I think, as she I clearly mentioned, lots of things created a disruption. Sleep gets very easily disturbed with any little stress. And this was not a little stress, this uncertainty, waves coming one after the other, still some more waves to come, people falling sick, relatives falling sick, financial burdens, work from home, uh, no boundaries. I have had individuals that I have talked to, um, students, adults, they're just working through the day and night. All the time they can get a message, they can get an email and they're expected to respond. And if you don't, the fear is that you might lose your job because so many were laid off. Uh, so it's been a very bad time for many people. And like you rightly said, the first lockdown, people just thought it was fun. I have had students and youngsters who pushed their bedtime from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then the world opened and they can't work. 
So now I have to take them back from 9 a.m. back to about 1 a.m. And that has created a lot of anxiety in them and the fear that I will not work and the fear that I'm not productive enough. And what will happen if I'm not productive? Because the whole day they sit and drink about 10 cups of coffee and by the night they are bad again. So I think this is uh, this whole scenario has done this. 20% to 30%, there has been a hike in self uh, prescription of sleeping pills all over the world. I don't even know the data in India. All I know is that the, all the sleeping aids and which can include tablets to uh, herbals, people have all taken, they have tried alcohol, they have tried substance, anything, and they all tell each other that, you know, you try this, you will succeed. Because it's become like the whole issue and the world revolves around that I can't fall asleep. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. So that has created a big worry and anxiety. And this is a bi-directional relationship. The poor sleep will create anxiety and increased anxiety will create the poor sleep. In fact, there was another interesting um, research that has come that they found that about 240 million searches were done on sleep in the last four years and about 150 million in the last one year. So everybody is using because Dr. Google uh, has actually surpassed all our professions. And um, I can say maybe has have been helpful, maybe not. Uh, but only thing, they give a whole lot of instructions and uh, the patients are getting uh, very confused as to what should I follow. So I will uh, start concluding uh, by summarizing what I have said and to continue in the line of what everybody has said, that prevention, so sleep health, as it's called now. So we have things like emotional health, cardiovascular health, the concepts, yes, you are right, sleep health. So these are health and it is absence of disease. It's not that you just have to have a disease and treat the disease. Heart has to be healthy. Emotionally, you need to be healthy. So sleep health forms a very big basis for all the different aspects or domains of health. It maintains your blood pressure. It maintains your blood sugar. We haven't talked about the physical aspects of health, but just to mention a few, it maintains, uh, it's, it has a very, very big role in immunity. So your ability to fight the infection and for those, the ability to produce the immune responses when you take the vaccinations. So there are enough studies to say that if your sleep is not adequate, you will not produce good antibodies for the vaccine. So please make sure uh, before and after the vaccines have very good sleep. So that's why it forms the basis. Uh, it has a particularly strong relationship with mental health, memory, creativity, attention span, and thus helps you to evolve, adapt, and be resilient. Uh, so if we are to continue, like she said, being in this new normal, to flourish in this new normal, we need to harness all whatever we can within our limits. And this is free. Only thing is take care of these things. But in addition to this, I do uh, want to emphasize that good nutrition, regular exercise, regularity of habits, etc., are very important. So often people say that summarize and say, so what do I do if I want to sleep better? So I do want to say that the tips that we say now are just uh, to maintain a good sleep quality. But those who are having issues with anything related to uh, sleep or overall health or emotional health, um, and you are either relying on sleeping aids or thinking of taking sleeping aids, or the sleep issue has disrupted your life altogether, please seek help. So what can one do on a regular basis? Just a few things to set your body clocks right. Please keep a fixed time for bedtime and a wake up time. The moment we fluctuate this, that now what people are doing is because they are back to work, but the weekdays, weekend concept has started. So Monday to Thursday, they will want to sleep at a particular time and wake up at a particular time. Friday, Saturdays, it becomes different. And comes Monday, it's bad again. So just keep a time, body 
can maybe adjust about an hour or so. The youngsters feel that it's like uh, not really possible and it's atrocious to tell somebody to sleep around midnight. But if you want to be good the next day, that's what. Second, keep track of your caffeine. Caffeine lingers in the body, especially in some people till six to eight hours. So if you have that's five o'clock, six o'clock, eight o'clock uh, cup of good coffee, you will not be able to sleep at night. Please keep some time for your regular physical activity. I know it's hard. People are working again, like I said, 15 hours, 16 hours, but do try and you know, we said that health is the ultimate thing that one can really rely on. So we need to have good physical activity. This improves the nighttime sleep. And of course, have a pre-bedtime relaxing ritual. And uh, the minister talked about the connectivity. Uh, yes, there is lots of research now that what is the last activity that people do and what is the first and it is the phone. So the phones can stimulate you, the light can disturb you, lots of ways the phones can interfere. So people have started saying that have a lockdown for the phone, curfew time for the phone, escort your phones out of the bedroom, say good night, all sorts of things, whatever works for you. But uh, screen time and some relaxing activity, whether it is some deep breathing, uh, pranayam, shavasana, whatever you feel will relax you. So with that, I thank everyone uh, for their attention. And I do hope that we will uh, enter the next year uh, being more prepared and uh, taking care of our health and wellness. Thank you again.